Hello, I'd like to start this week's lesson by going over the question that I asked at the end of last week. So if you don't remember the question, that's okay, I'll go over it because often I can't remember what happened last week either. So um, now I didn't get to see your answers, so I don't know if you all got the same answer or had different answers, but I did ask this question in another class where I got to see their answers and I got so many different responses I thought, let me just go over it. One thing is I probably could have been more clear about the question. So if you were confused, I apologize. I'll try to be more clear this week. And some of the answers I saw, people were guessing, and sometimes I think people were answering a different question that they heard in their brain. So first, let's just go over this rhythm, because I want to make sure that no matter what, you all know how to clap this rhythm if you see it. So if I counted you in, one, uh, two, uh, here we go. If that's what you were thinking, then we're at least, let me point to that again. Here we go. It's t t t t t t t Good. So if that's what you were thinking in your brain about how the rhythm goes, we're off to a great start. So I saw at least a couple people in one class answered four to my question. Well, they did a great job of copying down this rhythm. Four would have been the answer if my question had been, how many beats are in the rhythm, right? Let's count them. Here we go. It's one, one, two, two, three, he, four, right? That wasn't my question. At least one person answered two with a question mark. Uh, that would have been the answer if I had said how many different kinds of notes are in this rhythm, right? Eighth notes and quarter notes. Two. Um, at least one person said seven was the answer. That would be the answer if my question had been how many sounds are in this rhythm, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But again, that wasn't my question. So my question was, let's go back to what song we're talking about. I'll remind you, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And if you look at this rhythm, you'll see, sure enough, Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That is the opening rhythm for Twinkle, Twinkle. Now, in fact, that's the only rhythm that's used in Twinkle, Twinkle, if you're singing it in the standard English version. So my question is, see if you can come up with the answer with me. We'll go over it right now. When I sing the song once, how many times do you hear this rhythm? So I'm going to sing it for you. We're all going to count and make sure we all get the right answer. So, here I go. <clears throat> twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's one, right? Okay, let's start over again so we can start. So I won't stop this time. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Did you all get six that time? Good, I hope so, because that was the answer I was looking for. Now, let me show you, just to show that I am not making this up, I'm gonna show you the actual music for Twinkle, Twinkle, and we'll talk about a few more things. All right, here we are with the actual notes. So here's that opening rhythm, right? T, 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 ta. And if you look at the next measure over, you'll see, sure enough, that same rhythm, right? T, 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 ta. And in fact, every measure has the same thing. T, 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 ta. Six measures total, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we have it on paper. Now there's one other thing I want to talk about this song, which happens in a lot of pieces of music, but because this is such a simple, famous song, let's just do it right now. So I'm going to use note names to talk about. We're starting on C, that's the opening pitch, right? So if I sang the note names, C, C, G, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C, that's the first opening phrase, right? Let's see if that comes back anywhere. Hmm. C. Ooh, what's that? In fact, aren't the words the same too? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Same words, 
Are the notes the same? C, C, G, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. They are. So we have the same exact thing in the beginning and end of the song. So I'll label that. We'll call that section A. All right. A again. I know that's pretty straightforward, but it's kind of fun to talk about the form of a piece. So let's just try this. This time I'm going to do it using the Do, Re, Mi, Solfege. Okay, so if this is our Do, we're going to end on Do, right? Most songs end on Do. All right, let me just sing that part. Do, Do, So, So, La, La, So, Fa, Fa, Mi, Mi, Re, Re, Do. Right, so it shoots all the way up to Do and La. Then we take the slow elevator down. Same thing happens here, right? Do, do, so, so, la, la, so, slow elevator, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, re, do. So section A is on the outsides, obviously. Oh, this is something different, right? So, so, fa, fa, mi, mi, re. So, so, fa, fa, mi, mi, re. So usually we call that something different. We call that section B. All right. So Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, in case you didn't know, is a giant ABA form. So that's one of the most basic forms there is in music. ABA. And it's actually the same form as an Oreo cookie, because if you've ever eaten one, you know that it's got the crisp cookie on the outside. The creamy filling on the inside is like the B section. And then the crisp cookie is another A. So in that, every time you eat an Oreo, think of that ABA. So we're going to sing the song one more time with the piano. You can even eat an Oreo cookie if you're at home. Okay, so one last time with the piano. Twinkle, twinkle. You can follow along with the ABA form. Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So that's one thing that I really like about music. It's so cool. You can take a simple piece that you heard a thousand times before, and you can still find something new to talk about, whether it's a rhythm that repeats over and over, or the form of it, ABA. You can even find ways to relate it to other things in the world, like Oreo cookies. Now I have a song I'd like you to listen to from the West Indies, which refers to a bunch of islands in the Caribbean. 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 Well, I've heard both. I'm not sure which one's officially correct, so I'll take either pronunciation. In any case, the West Indies. Now, why do we call them the West Indies? Well, we have to blame Christopher Columbus, because he sailed all the way around to India, or so he thought. It turned out he actually had gotten to somewhere else in between. So, some people still call them the West Indies because they're not quite all the way to India, but um, halfway. So this refers to, you've heard of a bunch of these islands like uh, Jamaica, Cuba, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and lots of other teeny islands. So, all right, enough of that history, geography, because this is music class. Um, but I do like to bring some of that in, because although this is music, if you study any one subject long enough, you find out that all the other subjects kind of get woven in there and you can't separate them. So music doesn't just happen by itself in a vacuum. It happens all over the world, including the West Indies. All right, let's get on to this rhythm. Here we are. We've got eighth note by itself on the outside. We have a quarter note on the inside, eighth note on the outside. Wait a minute. I am seeing a mini ABA form in this rhythm. An Oreo cookie. Uh-oh, I'm seeing Oreo cookies everywhere this year. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but it's 2020, we can expect anything. All right, so the rhythm goes like this. The song goes about this speed, if that's the beat. It's about like this. Ti-ta, ti. That's the rhythm. Ta-ta, ta. 
da, da. So you're going to hear that rhythm a bunch of times in the song. If you're super sharp, you can try to count how many. It doesn't matter if you get the right number or not, as long as you hear at least one of these. So here we go, Mango Walk from the West Indies. If you were counting that rhythm and you happen to get nine just now, congratulations, that's what I got. If you were close, that's okay, that doesn't matter either. So, all right, now that rhythm duh, 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 usually is followed by two quarter notes in this song. So often what you heard was duh, 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 right? Now, if you're keeping the beat while that rhythm was going on, Right? It would be da, 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 da. Right? So that whole rhythm is four beats total. This is pretty easy, right? Beats three and four. But beats one and two have kind of a syncopated thing. So I just would like to talk about different ways that you can have eighth note rhythms over the course of two beats. If it sounds complicated, don't worry. I hope to explain. It'll be super easy. Okay, here we are, a whole page of rhythms. Each of these rhythms is two beats. It's nothing to be worried about. In fact, the good news is you have seen and heard each of these rhythms hundreds, if not thousands of times already in your life. I like to think of them as each of these is a Lego block that can be used for building music, but more on that in a little bit. Let's just try the first one. So here we are. It should be no surprise if I count you in one. Two, here we go. Ta, ta. Pretty easy, right? Just two beats. Ta, ta. And I'm leaving some space. Rhythm two, we replace each of these ta's with a ti, ti. One, two, here we go. Ti, 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 ti. And again, ti, 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 ti. So rhythms one and two should be pretty crystal clear. I can't speak. Now, rhythm three, we just replace one of the quarters with eighths. So ready? A one, two, rhythm three. Ta, ti, ti. And again, ta, ti, ti. I think that's pretty clear, right? Rhythm four is just the opposite. The ti, ti's come before the ta. Let's try that one. One, two, uh, here we go. Ti, ti, ta. And again, ti, ti, ta. Just two beats, right? Ti, ti, ta. That makes sense that each of these is two beats. Good. Now, before we go on to rhythm, actually, let's do, aha, uh -huh. I have rhythm two on here twice, and that's for a good reason. Let's go over this one again. Ready? Here we go. T, 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 right? Rhythm, this way that rhythm two is written, it looks a little different as far as sound. If you close your eyes, they are exactly the same. So this just is how you write an eighth note when it's by itself. When they're joined, you have a theme. Connecting them, if you imagine a pair of scissors, they cut the bean, it kind of droops down a little bit. At least that's the picture I have in my mind about why it makes a flag that droops down. So let's try this rhythm. Sounds the same as this. Ready? And here we go. T, 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 T. Good. Let's do rhythm two and rhythm two. Ready? One, a two, a here we go. T, 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 T. Now this one. T, 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 T. Exactly the same. Good. So... Now rhythm five, which is the one we were just listening for in our song. Now if you look, if you're a detective, you can see ah, that first note is the same, right? So, and the last one's the same, right? Just an eighth note. Now if you imagine we're not making any sound on this one, so instead of ti 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 ti, it's like ti ti ti, right? 
and we're holding this because it's a quarter note a little bit longer. I know that explanation is probably too much talking. Let's just do rhythm five a couple times. Ready? And here we go. Da, da, da. And again. Da, da, da. One more time. Da, da, da. Good. So you've heard that thousands of times in your life. Rhythms six and seven are just the opposite of each other, just like rhythms three and four. So remember, the eighth note is always short. The dotted quarter, it just means that the quarter note's stretched a little bit longer. So I can feel it stretching, right? So it's like long short. Let's try that one, ready? One, two, and here we go. Long short, and again, long short. Good, now this one, rhythm seven, the long is before the short, so it's gonna be like long short. Ready, let's do that one three times in a row. Ready, one, two, and here we go. Long short, long short. And in my brain, I'm actually not just saying long, but I'm making three short eighth note sounds. I'm going long short. That's how long the long is, right? It's da bum, da bum. So each, the same thing with this one, right? It's like short, long, right? I know that's not the best way to sing. Uh, 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 uh. You get seasick. But that's what I'm thinking in my brain. So I just don't want it always to come out that way when I'm singing. All right, let's try. Let's go through each of these in order, and then we'll talk about the Lego part of it. Ready? Here we go. Ta, ta. And again, ta, ta. We'll do each one twice. T, 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 T. And again, T, 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 T. Let's skip to this one. T, 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 T. And again, T, 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 T. Number three, ta, T, T. And again, ta, T, T. Number four, T, T, ta. One more time. T, T, ta. Number five, da, da, da. And again, da, da, da. Number six, short, long. And again, short, long. This one, long, short. Last time, long, short. Good. So now let's talk about how it's like Lego. Here we are, musical Legos. We're going to snap a couple of these blocks together to get some musical Lego rhythms. So let's go back to the song you were just listening to. Go mango, right? That's the mango rhythm. If we snap five and one together, so there's no space. You're going right, you're imagining that one is right after five, just like I had earlier. All right, so here we are, five plus one. This is our mango rhythm. It goes like this. Go mango, go, and da, 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 whatever the words are, I forgot, but that's an example. Good, now there's another famous example that you all know, or that you might have heard from uh, our All God's People Sing book. It's a song called Somebody's Knocking at Your Door. Uh, let's see, let's sing a little bit. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Good, and if you were rhythmic detectives, you could actually hear, we're starting with somebody's. That's five, right? So this time our Legos are five plus two. So let's try that. It sounds like this. Somebody's knocking at your, right? I'm skipping door for now. That would be a half note. Let's try that again. So here we go. Somebody's knocking at your, right? Now what about the part that's, oh, sinner. Oh, we have that here somewhere, don't we? Oh, long, short, right? So that's seven. Oh, sinner. That's two even sounds. That's number one. So seven plus one is oh, sinner. Here we go. Oh, sinner. Then why don't you answer? That would be five plus one, right? Why don't you answer? And so on. So a lot of songs are like this. You've got different Blocks snap together to make cool rhythms. How about one more? Oh, you know this one. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I mean, you've heard that many times. 
Now, usually you're not even thinking of the rhythm because you just have fun singing it, which is what music is all about, ultimately. But let's talk about the rhythm since we've got them up here. So, peace like a river. That's the part that I'm talking about. Peace like a river. Hmm. Let's see. Like a river. It's kind of funny because we've got, if we combine number seven first, and then number six. So there's a lot of like long, short, short, long, long, so it's kind of like, kind of throws you off a little, right? Long, short, short, long. Aha. See so if you can hear that in the song. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. And actually, in my brain, like, I'm dividing into three teeny little, I'm going, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. Now, when we sing it in chapel, we don't have time for the little, that sounds kind of weird. Peace like a river. No. But that's what's happening in my brain. I'm thinking of those three little sounds. So let's try that again. So, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. Good. So just a little bit about rhythm, Legos, snack, snapping them together. Now I'd like to try something that's a little bit ambitious, given that we're all at home. Um, and I won't be able to see your results, but it's actually something you're all capable of doing, even if you've never tried it before. We're going to try composing our own rhythms that are eight beats long. So it sounds scary, but don't be scary. I'll walk you through it. So again, you're going to make up your own rhythm that is eight counts or eight beats total. So here's how I'm going to do it. Start with a regular piece of paper. I know you can also do it on your computer, but I like paper because it's been working for thousands of years. Usually I use a pencil, of course, for writing, but because, so to make sure you can see it, I'm going to use a heavy marker. If I were at home, I'd use a pencil, but that shows up better on the projector. So here we are, got my piece of paper. Um, so I said eight counts, right? I'm just going to number those at the top of the paper so I know where I am. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, that's pretty easy, right? <laughs> I just wrote one through eight on a piece of paper. That helps me keep track of how many beats I have, what I want to fill in, um, how that's going to work. So let's see. Beat one, I feel like starting kind of simple. Let me just do ta, which is a quarter note. So I'll go slowly in case you, just to review how to write a quarter note, you basically make a circle, fill it in. And I like going, I think of myself, up on the right, out of sight. That's how I remember what side to go up on. I know sometimes quarter notes have a stem pointing down that would be on the other side. Just for simplicity, I'm going to have everything go up on the right. Good. Let's see. Beat two. Oh, beat two. I feel like doing nothing. So I'm going to put a big quarter rest. And I'll show you how to make more of those in just a second. Um, here's how I make mine. It's like a zigzag with a little curl of QC underneath it. Again, I'll do a little quarter note rest tutorial at the end of this in case you want to put some rests in yours. Let's see. Beat three. I feel like doing TT. All right. So again, to make TT, it's like making two quarter notes, but you have to connect them with a beam. Otherwise, if there's no beam, it's just two quarter notes, and you want TT, right? So here's my rhythm so far. I've got three beats already covered, right? Ta, rest, TT. We need something on beat four, don't we? Let's see. Beat four, I feel like doing another ta. All right. So you could do your whole rhythm with nothing but ta's, tt's, the occasional rest. There's nothing wrong with that. That would be super easy. Now I'm going to get kind of sophisticated because we just talked about some rhythms that happen over two beats, right? I'm going to take the rhythm that we talked about earlier today, the da da da, 
right? So that was, actually it was rhythm five in my sheet earlier. What a coincidence. All right, so to make one of those, I do eighth note by itself. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Remember, I didn't line it up the best, but that would happen over beats five and six. So actually in the ideal world, that should be shifted over a little. I wasn't thinking that's okay. But does that make sense? It's da, 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 is over beats five and six. So a little syncopated. Again, you don't need to use that rhythm. I just did because we talked about it today. So, all right, let's see. Beat seven, I feel like doing, you know, let's keep it simple. Seven and eight are just ta. Ta, ta, ha ha. Sometimes simple is the best. All right, so I use the big fat marker so you can see everything. Let's just try this rhythm to see if it's possible. I'm gonna do it kind of slowly. So here's my beat. All right, ready? One, two, here I go. Ta, rest, ti, ti, ta, da, 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 da. And if I was gonna do it twice in a row, right after eight, I run right back to beat one. Let's try that, twice in a row. One, two, here I go. Ta, rest, ti, ti, ta, da, 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 da. rest, da, 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 da. And I can do it over and over now. Once you've got your rhythms written out, I'm gonna play the 12 bar blues. I knew that would be coming back, right? 12 bar blues, and you're going to do your rhythm over and over until I'm done with the 12 bar blues. Now here's an interesting question, I'll tell you the answer. How many times <laughs> does this rhythm go if you're doing the 12 bar blues? Okay, here's your quick math. 12 measures, four bars each, 12 times four, 48 beats all together. And then we have this rhythm is six, or is eight beats total, right? So 48 divided by eight is six. So if my math is correct, each time I play the 12 bar blues, you should have your rhythm six times. Let's just see if it works with my rhythm. In case you wanna put a quarter rest or two or more in your rhythm, Here's a quick crash course on how to write them. So I do this, it's a zig zag, then it's kind of like the letter C underneath it. So here we are, lightning bolt, zig zag, C. And again, lightning bolt, zig zag, C. Let me try one more, lightning bolt, zig zag, C. So they don't all look perfect, they're not even all lined up, um, but that's okay, that's your crash course in quarter rest. Good luck. All right, I just made a little recording of myself playing the 12 bar blues one time through on the piano. So let's see if this works with my rhythm. Nice and slow. A one, two, here we go. and then it would end on the next one. Good, it does work, hallelujah. So I, um, in my head I was counting that actually was six times through my rhythm, but don't even worry about that for now. All you have to know is right after beat eight, I went right back to one. So that's all you have to do. Let's see if you can do that with your rhythms. Good luck. For today's grand finale, we have your eight count rhythm, eight beat rhythm, to the 12 bar blues. And you're gonna hear me do two versions. First, we're gonna do the slow version you just heard. Then I'm gonna zip it up a little bit faster. So you have a choice. You can either use your same eight beat rhythm for both of those, or if you're feeling super ambitious, you're always welcome to make up a second eight beat rhythm for the second one. All right, here we go, nice and slow.
good. Now, the second tempo. Get ready. A one, a two, a one, two. Here we go. Did you end when I did? If so, congratulations. All right, so I'm just trying to have some fun. I'm trying to make it fun for you. Um, and I'm still kind of feeling my way out for this whole virtual online thing. As long as it's fun for everybody, that's half my goal right there. All right, I will see you next time. Bye.